Okay, so it's finally arrived. Solomon Kane from Mythic Games. And I'm going to do an unboxing here um, of the Wave 1 uh, con content. Now, this does not have the mat or the sleeves, um, but I do have the right hand Doom, the art prints, and of course, the core box and Arsenal box. So, starting with, uh, I really appreciate this. It comes a really nice protective uh, sleeve. A little thank you for backing the game. And uh, we've got these beautiful art prints um, in included in there, which is the kind of A3 art prints. And just showing off some of the art from Solomon Kane. Beautiful. Oh, it's one of my favourites. In Africa. Oh, the, the red horror. Show the sheer size of this thing. And uh, so beautiful to have those. Um, that's, a, that's a beautiful addition. I really, like, really appreciate that. Um, and a nice protective cover, uh, cover slip for that as well, which is brilliant. Okay, uh, the other thing is the heart hook. Now look at that, that is a, that's a proper manual that is, that's beautiful. And we've seen this before, um, again with some beautiful art in it. Okay, that's and longer. There's the darkness, the virtues, to get the idea of um, what they look like, maybe what you paint like. And then I believe at the back we have got some of the map tiles and some of the painting. So you can get some ideas and I will certainly be using those to get some colour schemes. And, there's, and we've seen some beautiful painting so far by the community for the virtues, um, but they're going to be so much fun to paint. Now, it's not going to be... Contrast paints won't quite dig it that way, um, but we might be able to get something similar. Um, so that's what I'm gonna be trying to do when I do paint the miniatures uh, with contrast paints, which is what I'm planning on doing uh, to get that to work. Uh, but yeah, is that Gideon's Ghost? Yeah, it looks like the Traveler. And uh, if you haven't heard them, I, I went through the stories, the short stories, uh, which a lot of these core box stories are based on. That is one. Hard book covered art book, fantastic, absolutely beautiful. Um, I'll do the right hand of doom last. So we'll start with the core box. So this is the core box. Uh, Jake Thornton, obviously, um, lead designer on the game, uh, but a few other people to make note as well and. I'll show you those when we open the rule book in a second. Cellophane wrap, more plastic thrown away. I don't know. It's a hard one. Um, do you want your content not wrapped up? Um, some people, some different board game companies have used different ways to package their uh, their, board, their their games to stop that cellophane wrap which is basically just thrown away and it's plastic again, isn't it? We, we can't recycle. So yeah, it's one of those things. Okay, so this is the core box. It is extremely heavy and we know that's the case because of the uh, content of the um, the books, mostly a lot. So sorry about that. Um, but as you can see, 18 plus mature uh, content, one to five players as we know, and the, it's gonna take a little while to play this. Um, no zero to three year olds swallowing all the bits and a little bit of a example of a scene there as well so beautiful uh but it's so so heavy wow. really nice though beautiful box really good stock as as always we expect from mythic really nice stock of cardboard so i'm gonna kind of fly through this as quick as i can uh, because there's so many unboxing videos that have been of some fantastic quality ones as well, deep dives and so forth. So I'm going to do it slightly different. So we've got the quick start guide. We've got the rule book uh, with all the miniatures. So just in case you don't know which ones which you're using. And uh, the contents as well, as we know. Uh, just, just be aware, this is quite a new thing uh, in the rules with the Mercy and Luck cubes as well. Just in case you're wondering what, what, those, uh, what those are. 
when you see them. So this is the thing. When I saw the unboxing, this is the thing I was most interested in. And oh wow, it really is. It really is that heavy. <laughs> it really is that that amazing to see all of this beautiful deep story playable story narrative all in just wave this is the crazy thing this is just wave one guys this is just the core box Whew. which is which is daunting in a, in a way but really exciting in another so rattle of bones uh, i've read that one which find a general not read that one yet um that was a, a different one that was skulls and the stars one of my favorites this is oh, Oh, and it absolutely gorgeous, you know. I cannot wait for that one. <laughs> um, Loga. Again, I uh, couldn't find the short story on that, so whether that's a, a new one. Um, Haunted Mountain. Oh, I didn't even know about that one. Oh, that must be the one with the, the Abbots, isn't it? Ooh, that would be interesting. So that's a different one. Um, Death's Black Riders, his shortest story, yet... <laughs> Wow, I cannot wait to see how they've developed that story. Um, really looking forward to that one. The Beast of Bordeaux, again, couldn't find that story. And then the main, oh, we've got a little bit of a, little bit of a bent ring there. It's just come a bit loose, but this is, this is the main story from, uh, from the books. And one I don't, I haven't actually, um, yeah, I haven't narrated that particular story. I have found, I have got it. Um, but I haven't narrated it. Uh, the blades cross with a sharp clash of venomous steel, showering blue sparks across those blades. Hot eyes burn into each other. Hard, inky black eyes and volcanic blue ones. Breath hisses between close locked teeth. Feet scruff the sword, advancing, retreating. Ah, uh, I'll tell you what, the, the one I'm really, I'm really interested to see how they developed this Death's Black Rider um riders uh one that one i'm really intrigued but skulls of the stars is my favorite story that i've narrated um rattle the bones is pretty good but skulls of the stars is another one i'm really keen on just look at the size wow two acts two acts in that one that's a beast and i think there's two acts in death's black riders as well um oops yeah, act one of two. So two act um, stories, those two. Just the amount of content uh, to play through. It's just, it's, it's amazing, but it's really quite daunting as well. And as has been shown, uh, we've got the, the boxes. It comes with these. I think these are just for packaging um, and just for transportation rather than anything else. Um, to keep all the decks together. Uh, you've got your save box, discovery cards, player aids, everything else. So, um, yeah, you've got your dividers uh, to help for all that. Uh, you've got discovery cards for all the different journeys, telling you what they are down here and what act. A save box, as I say. More discovery cards. More discovery cards. And we've got player aid. Nice, always like player aids. Uh, shame there's only three. Huh, are they the same? Yeah, I don't know why there's only three instead of four or five. One for each player normally, but you know, enough for that to to, um, to move along. And really importantly, this is kind of the, the key the key part up, up here is the key words. This is gonna be the central part, like what is an ally, aura, what's a cloud, enemy, immortal. Uh, that's going to be really important. In fact, let's have a look. I think these, I really appreciate player aids. Um, they're really important. It also, oh, this is this is really nice. Uh, it tells you which page of the rule book to go to to look at tests. Oh, awesome. I love that. Which which uh, page to go to to, talk, to look into more detail about the virtue turn. What about darkness turn? Page 36. What about if there's a darkness player? Page 40. Oh, that is so good. That is so, so good. Love that. Really appreciate a player A card. I think they're essential. Uh, fight effect cards. Ah, awesome. Um, oh, these are these are more dividers for the smaller cards. Let's get rid of this plastic. Don't need that anymore. Um, and we got uh, the fight. Whoops. The fight cards. 
we've got the fight effect cards and we got the virtue cards and omens awesome we got the darkness cards we got the event cards and we got the normal darkness cards okay so uh yeah all the cards we want to do fence obviously for passing tests uh the darkness card is your, t your time tracker for your um yeah, I'm pretty sure all these plastic, again, hmm. depends how you feel about plastic. Um, I'm not a massive fan of just wasted plastic. I mean, that's just going to be thrown, well, recycled. I'll be able to recycle that. Um, but yeah, I understand it. Either, uh, but lovely insert. We've got a nice, good insert here. <clears throat> Looks like it's going to be plenty of room for, for sleeving and for keeping in, which is really nice. And then we've got our first set of tiles as well. Um, which again, just when they're releasing in the Kickstarter updates, when they're releasing the the tiles and the art on the tiles, it's just like wow, that's just yeah, sometimes overlooked. But how good are those tiles? I mean, they're just so beautiful. Um, something I really, really do appreciate. Obviously, plenty of storage for all your stuff. Whoops, sorry. Plenty of storage for all your stuff inside there as well are the cardboard tiles going to get scuffed yeah <laughs> certainly look like um they, they will do to a point but um not going to detract from the art look at it the art on them reminds me a little bit of matches of madness yeah beautiful dark grim world that Solomon Kane occupies. We've got the beach there. But really beautiful. You're going to make interiors, exteriors, beaches, forests, all to go round wherever you're going. Tokens, obviously, as you've been shown. And uh, there was a lovely post up in Discord very recently where someone's painted the tokens um, and really just making them vibrant. You've got your trackers, of course, for strength, clarity, compassion danger uh and we've got uh beautiful we've got the symbols on them as well so uh they're looking nice we've got the spawn tokens x y and z and we've got the player order tokens one two three and four in there as well so we've got all the tokens uh, that will go on the board which is in the other box and we've got a compass as well so we know where is north south east and west lovely again can be painted up can look a treat then we got mercy and fake cubes which look like just normal cubes but same size as the dice of course which is the important point and then we got the dice themselves um which is really nice uh they don't i don't think unless it's coming in wave two i, I think they got rid of the uh the ones that glow in the dark for darkness so they originally were going to give um, dice oops, dice that glow in, glow in the dark for the darkness as a stretch goal. I don't know if that's still happening or not. Um, possibly not. But I uh, appreciate when they give you plenty of dice to be rolling because you are gonna you might be storing them. You might be reserving them. You might be giving them to other players. So there could be quite a number of these dice. Um, Got to give them a roll. Real nice weight to them. Engraved, not stickers. So that's all complete engraving on those dice. Real nice weight to them. Beautiful dice. <laughs> if dice are your thing. And a lovely place for them up here as well. Now what I haven't noticed is there's no kind of plastic cover. So whether these are going to stay there with just the uh, the books on top, I don't know. I think that'll be a, it may not work like that. So you've got all these books obviously, which, which are insane. Half one way, half the other. That is just crazy content. I mean, the content is insane in this game. <laughs> Absolutely awesome. Uh, rule book, obviously. And I just wanted to to go to the back. Here we go. So we've got the d designers here. Um, obviously, Jake Thornton is the game designer, and then we've got the scenario designers: uh, Babis, um, Nicholas, and Dale. 
um, and some developers as well, including Josh and Stuart, who are obviously big, big on the the old um, Super Fancy Brawl, of course, and Ed and Steve as well. So, um, fantastic uh, development team uh, to bring this into a reality. And if you listen to my narration of the short stories from Ari e. Howard, you'll realise how much extra stuff uh, those designers and developers have put into this game to make it playable as and gamify it and really make it into its own. Um, very, very impressive. And I'm certainly going to be um, enjoying painting up the figures, which we're going to see next, and taking this through to its to, to its game on gameplay on the on the channel as well. Okay, let's do see do and go on to the Arsenal box, which is box number two. So very similar to um very similar to Joan of Arc in the sense that we had the reliquary uh, box and we had the core box. So very, very similar. Uh, the only difference here is you need both of these boxes to play Solomon Kane, whereas technically you put everything into the core box of the Joan of Arc and you can play all the core box scenarios, but you would need the reliquary um, content for the stretch goals stuff. So slightly different here in the sense that you haven't got like a core box and then stretch goals. It's kind of all the miniatures, some of the tiles, and all the tokens. Although the tokens will get transferred to the core box anyway, um, but the Arsenal box will contain everything else that you need. Speaking of which, oh my god, I know people have said about the size of this. That is a beast. Look at that. Uh, so, uh, dual layered, of course, as you can see here, to put your uh, tracker on. And this is going to go up and down, giving you bonuses on strength, clarity, and compassion, but uh, negatives on danger as you go up, because these pluses um, obviously aren't good things. Um, again, this tells you how you're the state of the game as you go through the act. If you drop off any of the top three tracks uh, below one, you lose the game. If you go above 10 danger, you lose the game. So this is kind of your tracker for the game as you're going through the act. And of course, it will change as you go through each scene or each story of the scenarios and chapters until you get to the final conclusion of each act oh that i actually <laughs> this is little but i do appreciate it uh, a little little holder that you can just grab it up with so these tokens need to be all punched out um oops uh whatever they might be uh obviously the light tokens um but we've got other ones as well which will be really interesting to see whether wound tokens or seals we've got plus shadows uh which might happen this this is to do how you're doing in a scenario like a points tracker looks like some kind of doom wounds the symbols on the dice so yeah who knows we'll be told and one through to ten as well for objectives and stuff like that we've got the north east south and west uh as a cardboard token as well here are our um, purity uh, tokens, uh, which give you one-off um, advantages. And this is the cloud where you put all your tokens, uh, your mercy cubes, things like that, as you play through each scenario. And you can just choose if you want it in the kind of sunset or the dusk, as it were. So that's the cardboard. And then we've got... Mm, okay. And we got... Okay, we've got spaces. Hmm. I'm not sure how I feel about that. Cause then I understand that it's been, it's so it can fit this exactly, but <laughs> hang on, that's not right, is it? That must have gone there. Right? Yeah. Um, hmm. I'm not sure how I feel about that because I don't really want to, that's not easy, is it? Oh, and then we've got, We've got rays on that part as well. I'm going to have to have a look at that. Right, okay. So we've got the player boards and the save pad. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, plenty of pages for your save pad. That's nice. I really appreciate that. Um, good quality as well. That's nice. Uh, then we've got the player board. Oh, these dashboards. Wowzers. These are awesome.
So these are the player dashboards, Prudence, uh, double double layered for where the recess is, where you're going, your uh, standard actions, uh, this one, which is uh, adding in X, where uh, X is the number of uh, light tokens, of course. Uh, what you can do uh, once you roll the dice, a little bit about what Prudence is, donated reserved area, and then your right and left hand, and what the aura does. Beautiful courage. Now we go temperance and justice. So they're be oh, really, oh, really lovely. Uh, really good size, just beautiful, really nice. Then you've got providence, of course, for your solo mode, uh, which has got her own um, level up abilities, if you like, uh, and your space for three reserved, and then your darkness, um, which is real nice. Ah, corruption, that's what it is. It's corruption. Okay. So they're the player boards, but again, you're just going to be placing them in. Might be better. Mm, yeah, just going to place them in here. They're going to be rattling about like anyone's business. Mm, I don't know. Um, then we got the rest of the tiles. Wow. I'm going to keep them in the cellophane wrap for now. Um, then we got the boxes. So these are the cardboard boxes uh, for the game. So uh, that's. Fun. Oh yeah, let's read what it says. There is no one. Okay, fair enough. The one's below the two, I think. So I'm going to start five, go down one. So five. Let's see what we got in box number five. I think this is the virtue. So this is this is quite a nice one to start with. Oh no, it's not. It's the it's the providence and darkness with everything else. So th this is one of the ones I've been really looking forward to. Now, underneath here are the two shadows that they promised. Uh, that wasn't really found in the uh, pre. Um, pre-production copy um, and they are very nice so looking at the shadow good detail no mold lines or well, very few I think they've used the mold line on these on these seams which is a clever idea if they've done that um, yeah they're looking like not a lot of touch-up needed on them at all not that I do touch up anyway but still <laughs> Um, yeah, very nice. So they just, oh, easy. They, oh, 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 wow. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> I go up there. There we go. Uh, so these aren't clipping. These are literally resting, uh, slots. So just to be aware. Okay. Oop. So, ah, oh, this is the one I've been waiting for. Let's try and get some light over here a minute. So here's the ogre, little ogre, uh, holding a little dog, it looks like, here. Um, what great detail. He's going to be beautiful, plain. And of course, a massive part of this is all modelled bases. Massive trunk of a club, uh, carrying his sticks on his back. That looks amazing. So that's the ogre. Which is sitting on top like that. Then we've got darkness. Look <laughs> at the people. Uh, stabbing themselves through their bodies as they worship. Uh, darkness. The skulls in there. Really nice detail again. Yep, we can see the definition in the fingers. Which get, I mean, the contrast paints are going to absolutely love these things. Uh, so, yeah, that's what beautiful miniature. That's really nice, really solid. Not going to see much movement there. And wow, now look at Providence. Now that is a miniature. Uh, really nice straight swords. No bend in them at all. Um, great detail all the way into the uh, cloak there with the foot. It's just absolutely gorgeous. And look at the detail, just look at the detail of the shield. It's a lot of pain ahead, but it's going to be amazing. Even the detail in the uh, the little um, defenders, the little guards. Look at the, the dented shields. <laughs> and they're different. The shields are different. Look, that's, the, that's what I mean about detail. If you have a look at the detail where the dents are on this shield, it's different to this shield. So it's not just, a, they've not just created two of these and then stuck them on. They are two different things completely, which is crazy. Oh, that is beautiful. The cloak, are oh, the, ah, oh, oops. Well, that's um, ridiculously impressive. The bear. 
from the black desk black rider uh, and that's the bear whatever however that comes into play as you're searching for their den as it were um what's that something down there is that a hand <laughs> not really sure um yeah and again contrast gonna love that with all the uh the fur detail there and then the alpha male wolf awesome absolutely awesome and i'm not seeing many mold like i'm not gonna do any touch up not that i do anyway but um much anyway uh, but I'm not going to bother with any of this. It doesn't need doing. Look at the base. Now, the only issue is, of course, trying to get in to the base because it's pre-assembled. Um, but I think we should do fine. And you can see here that this is its kill in in the in the ground here as well. Oh, that's so cool. Wow. So that, well, what a box to start with. <laughs> Possibly the best box to start with. And... Um, I really appreciate this, uh, this storage solution. Uh, myself, personally, I really like this uh, because it's going to, when I pick them up, it's going to keep them from banging each other. They're not going to be banging each other. There's no, that might be an issue. Uh, <laughs> there's no corrosive, um, abrasive. It's just smooth plastic. So it's not any foam, which can, which can, you know, rub off some of the paintwork and so forth as you paint them. But, ooh, it's not. So let's put that one into number five. Right, number four. I'm a bit worried about this because it's it's raised, which is a bit odd. Is this the uh, oh, where is, it? is this the riders? Oh, oh no, these are virtues. Okay, these are virtues. Now the good news is, kind of, is that she's stabbing her friend. Right. The good news is. Now, it's quite flexible uh, plastic on the bottom. The good news is that's the bit that's hitting the box. So as long as you don't put anything really heavy on it, it's not going to do much to your miniatures. Your miniatures should be fine. Uh, she's not even in, in properly. Um, but these are the Virtues and Gideon's Ghost. So we'll start with Gideon's Ghost. Oh, these are actually... Well, Gideon's Ghost slightly popped in. It, tells, it shows your direction that you need to put uh, facing... And here is Gideon's Ghost oh, from Skulls of the Stars, one of my favourite stories that I've read. Uh, we can see, yeah, we can see a mold line cut across there. It's not that bad. That's nah, not too bad. Oh, mm. well, that's a bit weird. I think people have shown this before. Where it's just been glued on a bit, rotated the wrong way. Uh, it's just not quite lined up, is it? Hmm. Mm, that's a bit of a... Yeah, I think people have mentioned that before. Um, but... Again, just a beautiful miniature still. Absolutely gorgeous miniature. <laughs> Gideon's Ghost. Oh, wow. Uh, hang on a second. She tilted. Yeah, she's a bit tilted. Bit bent, maybe a bit of hot water. Uh, she, if you look there should be um, a little bit more vertical. I think a really nice, straight, look at that straight sword, courage. Um, so yeah, courage needs a little bit of, um, a little bit of work on it. Um, but, oh, beautiful detail again. I mean, look at those virtues, just beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous, There's a flash there. She needs a bit of a trim, a little bit of a, little bit of a clean up. Well, there's a bit of plastic still, uh, loose plastic, but the details, absolutely gorgeous. She's a proper knight, she is. Courage it is. That's the one you, you'll need to play, I reckon, for, um, for uh, Skulls and Stars, judging by the story. Justice. I really appreciate these. That's that's kind of Marvel Crisis Protocol style. That is, that's amazing. Um, look at the pace as well. They are just gorgeous. I mean, they are they are the uh, the key pieces, uh, the signature pieces of the game. Of course, the the virtues 
along with Solomon Kane, which we'll see in a minute. Um, but yeah, just a little bit of a, a point there, but there as well. Just needs a bit of cleaning up, a couple of bits, but I'm not seeing a mold line, which is really nice. Um, again, the contrast paints are just going to be so good on these. Is this Providence? This is one of my favourites, just just because of the base. Look at that huge kind of I don't even know what that is a massive shield of some sort, and then you got the snake making its way around. Oh, that's going to be so cool when it's painted up. Oh, I might have to. Mm. That is such a beautiful miniature. The pose, just everything about it. Look at oh, that is gorgeous. Love that miniature. Providence? I don't know. I don't know which ones we've got to. Um, uh, they're pretty strong. Uh, the connection points here. That should be right. And it's and it's holding its own. It's well, I say it's holding its own. If we look at this again, whew, at an angle. Uh, not not a game breaker because. When it's on the board, it's quite nice, to be honest. When it's on a flat surface, it's quite nice that it's leaning backwards. It means you can see it more. So I, I, even, even though it is kind of leaning back, I don't mind that at all. I, I quite like that because you're going to see more of it on the table. But just so much detail. Even the legs. Look at the cloak. It's going to be so nice to just paint up. Again, no mould lines. We actually see the face of this one. Oops, uh, absolutely gorgeous um, miniatures. Just, I mean, I knew they would be, but wow. That's my only issue. I don't know why they make it just a little bit taller to stop that kind of, that bow from happening. That's, that's a little bit, a little bit, a little bit of a niggle. <laughs> nothing, nothing, as long as, again, as long as there's no massive amount of weight being put on that, then... No. Then uh, that's not a problem, is it? Okay, number three. Uh, here's Death's Black Riders, I think. Solomon Kane. Now, these are ones I've been really looking forward to seeing. Because uh, it's the horses. Yes. Yes. They are... They are easily as nice as um, the Lord of the Rings strategy battle game horses, the Rohan Riders horses, and they were awesome to paint just on their own. But these are oh, look at the straight. <laughs> I love it. Look at oh, that is such a class miniature. Awesome. There is a little bit of a bend there, a little bit of a bend down here. Um, but nothing, <laughs> nothing to worry too much about. And again, really clean, really clean miniature. I'm not seeing a mold line. It must have done some really great design to to not get them. And look at the base. I mean, I keep going past these, but uh, the base is all done for you. I mean, that's wow. They're going to just come out so well. I just cannot wait to paint these. And Solomon Kane, of course, on his horse, which is a, the addition of what's gonna happen with his twin muskets, uh, pistols, sorry, um, drawn ready to go. Again, beautiful design on the horse. Uh, is it a different design? Uh, no, I think it's the same design horse. Yeah, fair enough. Exactly the same horse, so exactly the same designed horse as the Black Riders, um, but obviously with Solomon Kane cloak bellowing behind. That's such a dynamic pose, I love that. Love that and appreciate that. Um, with his different sword onto the side. Uh, yeah, that's looking beautiful. So another Solomon Kane, a rider Solomon Kane. And uh, really nice. And obviously three of those black riders as well. Really bespoke storage solution. I, I do appreciate that. Okay. Two. 
Oh, oh dear. Oh, these are... Yeah. Oh. The wolves have left their new uh, um, roost. Probably during uh, transportation, to be fair. Okay. A bunch of miniatures. Superb. So, uh, what I'm seeing here are some smaller ghosts of some kind. Um, like mini Gideon ghosts. That's cool. Uh, so quite a few of those. Obviously, Leo the Town Crier. Um, <laughs> God, how they got his likeness. <laughs> yeah, very nice. There's great detail on that as well. Uh, the Solomon Kane. Uh, the, oh, no. That's obviously, uh, I might have just done that myself. To be fair, that might have just been me pulling it out the wrong way. But I'm going to have to glue that on. Uh, and make sure that's all stuck on. So that, I think that was me. Just trying to pull it out just now, unfortunately. Uh, but nice straight sword. I will sort that out. And this is the this was the final stretch goal that they gave us, um, which is the alternate pose of Solomon Kane. I think it was the African pose. Musket and that pistol in the back. Oh, look at the detail. So cool. Skulls on the floor. Roots and vines and stones. And this flowing out. That's so, so nice. Whoops, and my fault. Uh, for, uh, I'm doing that. <laughs> Look at that. It's so, so good. The bubbling beer. Throffy beer. The wooden planked floor. The spillage. <laughs> oh, so good. So, so good. Uh, this is the kind of Bishop, is it? That was a stretch call. Look at look at the base. Just look at the base. With the uh, cobblestones and then the uh, the the paving and whatever it is. Um, and the ogres, the the shepherd, this dog, and the lamb on his shoulders. Look at the detail on that face. See if we can get that. Look. We know Mythic can do miniatures, right? <laughs> With the best, oh, this is the abbot. I mean, we saw these um years ago, uh, in a display cabinet painted by Seb Levine, and it was like, oh, they can't get the plastic that good, they can't get anywhere near, and they've just gone to prove that they can really can, and they continue to just surprise us and in a, in a really good way with the quality of miniatures and being a painter. And um, being that sort of person, uh, I, it's just so good. Little monk there, a couple of candles down, or is he a cultist? Who knows? Um, oh, the librarian monk. Look at that. Bit old, you can see in the joint of his face. Little rat down there. <laughs> Absolutely gorgeous. And look at these, look at these, uh, these guards. Pure straight line there. They're just really nice miniatures. Full stop. Just if you had that as a character, let alone just a just a lonely guard. Um, what's happened here? Huntress she's from the Death's Black Riders again. Is the expansion? So I think she's going after the uh, the bear, and perhaps you help her. Perhaps you don't. I don't know. Really nice. Really really nice. Oh, the blacksmith turned over. Just, it reminds me of Joan of Arc. Uh, Rattler bones there, some bones. And then the, the wolves themselves, the pack wolves. Wow, it's just, that's really, really impressive. Um, to see, they are just absolute quality, the miniatures. And when they're painted up and on, what's going on over there? Hang on a second. I think it's it's that bit there that's been caught on. Um, so I think I need to put it in through that way to avoid. Yeah, I'm going to need to put it in that way. Now, the question is, is it going to catch up catch up on the lip of the cardboard on this side? Or oh, is that going to be OK? Yeah, that seems better. So open from left hand side of the cardboard, just out of interest. If you, when you get yours, if you haven't got yours yet, open from the left hand side of number two. 
uh, to avoid what I just did to Solomon Kane. So let's do the same idea on this side. Here you see. So I think there's a little bit of snagging that's going on the left-hand side of those uh, boxes, perhaps. With Gaston Lamont. Um, okay, oh, more characters. And of course, the shadows. Uh, all important shadows. And of course, Solomon Kane. So the shadows again. We've already seen two of these already. A bit of flash. Uh, we just need to tidy that up, perhaps. Um, but again, beautiful. They're going to be real fun to paint. And actually, what I thought is you can use these as uh, ring wraiths <laughs> in strategy game, which would be quite cool. Right, okay, uh, the man of the hour, of course, uh, Solomon Kane. We've seen some fantastic paint jobs already um, from the community. Uh, and, of course, he's going to be one of the first ones to be painted up uh, to get in that. But look at this, Hard Drake. I think it's Hard Drake. Um, <laughs> the chest, the barrel. <laughs> Why not just to be standing on them? Uh, the numerous swords. His cutlasses, cutlass sign, I don't know, his cutlass, uh, everything, oh, look at the detail. Wow, 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 so cool. Um, one of mine, Jack Hollister, look at that pose. Look at that miniature, look at the straightness of that sword. <laughs> look at the definition in the hands. Wow, and the, the little seashell. Because he's going to be on the bone. There's the animated skeleton for Rattler Bones. It's been ch it's chained up at that point. Or is that a broken chain? Of course, it's the broken chain as he heads towards um, the this guy here. The tavern owner of the cleft skull. <laughs> Great muscle definition there. Oh, he's going to be a beauty to paint. Really nice flat bases, <laughs> no no movement on them at all, and these are just these are just general thugs, right? Yeah, they look like named characters because they have got so much detail and they look so good. You wouldn't have thought they were just no, oh, that's just the thug. Same as these, and look at them. I mean, I knew this game was gonna was gonna be quality, and I played it way back in the day uh, when they released it at first. Um, and I loved it then, and uh, they seem to have streamlined it, and it's, and done, George Banway, is this, I think? <laughs> Look at that. So, so good. Oh, I cannot wait. To, there's a lot to paint. Uh, the Traveller, from Skulls and the Stars. So he's going to be a one to paint up. Really soon, the Child from Skulls and the Stars. Uh, we've got villagers, so general villagers, uh, again, Skulls and the Stars. Uh, a bit of a, there's where it was connected to Sprue, which needs tidying up a bit. And some female villagers, very much like the, um, the Joan of Arc miniatures. Got some kind of pirate there as well, maybe. Look at the muscle detail, that is awesome. That's going to come out so well painted. Wow, that's going to be awesome. Who is this guy? Oh, that's um, Ezra, isn't it? Is that Ezra? I think that's Ezra. So that's another one that I'll be painting up soonish. Uh, Skulls and Stars again. Bit of a bent walking stick, but I suppose it's perhaps meant to be bent. And look at that, this stuff in the mud of the moor. Um, Gaston Le Amon. From the rattle of bones. <laughs> awesome. So look at the detail of that face. Just amazing. And someone else there as well. He's, oh no, we've got two of them. So these are these are just generic, generic thugs of some kind, uh pistol ones, sword ones, armoured ones, and everything else. Um wow. And that's the last box of miniatures. That's a lot of miniatures. <laughs> wow. I mean, that's, what's that, 24? No, more than that. Uh, 32 in there, for example. 32 miniatures just in that one box. No, more than that. Wow. Pretty much 40 miniatures in one. 
box. You can hear that. It's um, when they're painted up, that's not going to be too nice on them. But I think it's just sword, so it's not a big problem. Um, so that's the core box, the Arsenal box. Mm, I'm not happy about that. That's not. That's not great. Um, I think we're going to have to. Use, if you want to store, you're going to keep them in that just to make sure they don't rattle around everywhere, rattle the bones themselves, or else they're going to fly around. And I think they'd be fine to be honest uh, without the the um, cardboard. But I don't look at the size of that. <laughs> that's like the size of some board games. That's a bit. I mean, that's going to take up a huge amount of space. Did that need to be that big? I don't know. I think that's that's a bit excessive. That's bigger than a that's bigger than a four. Mm. <laughs> Appreciate the the art. The art's beautiful on it, and the and the quality of it is absolutely superb. But did it need to be that big? I don't know. It's taking up a lot of table space, so I'm gonna have to extend the table out when I'm playing this game. Okay, there's the two boxes. So that leaves us with the right hand of doom, which is the uh, expansion. It was given for free to early bird backers i believe um or you could just buy it as an expansion and we've already seen we've already seen uh leo and mythic play through this with an absolute brilliant uh playthrough quality board game and i'm not going to go over what everyone said about the fact of well do we need all of this for this one expansion uh, probably not, no. Um, but it's got one act, Right Hand of Doom, another book. Uh, this is just the box contents. One pack of Discovery cards. They can definitely go in the core box. Uh, the miniature is the only thing. Uh, what do you do with the miniature? Where do you put that? Um, but we could always just make use of probably something like this. Uh, where the miniature could maybe just um, tie in. I don't know. Uh, cut this out maybe. Uh, I don't think there's anything else in there. Nope. So that's a lot. That is a lot of space, to be fair. Yeah, and um, I have to figure a way of sorting that out a little bit to make it not. But uh, there's the miniature. <laughs> so cool. Obviously, with the sorcerer spilt wine there. Very nice. And your deck of cards that you need to play the game and the storybook. So there we go. There's the unboxing of Solomon Kane Wave 1. Can't wait till the rest of it comes out. Uh, the whole of Wave 2, of course, and all the expansions. That's going to be amazing to see. Um, so looking forward to that, but plenty to paint, plenty to play with this wave uh, in the waiting for Wave 2 to arrive. Obviously much more arriving very soon. Uh, Joan, of, uh, yeah, Joan of Arc to come through. The rest of that... Uh, all of that and um, and Street Fighter, the miniatures game. Uh, waiting for that to come. That's going to be coming very soon. So watch out for an unboxing of that, as well as some playthrough ideas of that as well. But pre-painted miniatures with that, so that's not going to add to my backlog. Okay, guys. Hope you enjoyed that. Uh, the next thing I'll be doing is uh, doing some painting. Uh, for Solomon Kane, so uh, certainly Solomon Kane himself, the virtues, obviously, as everyone has started with, because they're the ones you want to play with. I'm pretty sure I want to do Skulls and the Stars as my first um, playthrough. Um, I haven't decided yet how I'm going to play through it, whether I'm going to do Providence in typical solo mode, or whether I'm going to do um, the virtues, play all the virtues, and uh, do it that way. I'm not 100%, I haven't decided fully yet. Um, but I might, I'll probably go down the the Providence way, uh, Providence? Yeah, Providence way, oops, rather than uh, multiple things, just to keep, just to keep things as simple as possible. But that's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to uh, play through that. I'll, when, when I get time, I will start the painting, of course. Uh, it's not going to happen anytime real soon, um, but I will be sure to post up my painting uh, live. It'll be live in real time, as all my painting is. Um, and then we'll do my plan for the playthrough is not I don't want to be I don't want it to be rules heavy. So what I pl plan to do 
is just narrate what's happening a little bit like the stories. That's what I really want it to be like. Um, so rather than just saying what I roll, what I spend it on, I'll just narrate or, or kind of like uh, talk about uh, and um, uh, uh, like a story, like a story. So like like a storybook rather than talking about the rules and all of that. I don't, I don't want it to be about the rules. I want it to be about the story. So that's what I'm aiming to do with the playthroughs. Hopefully that will come out right, uh, come out well, and uh, you will enjoy the playthroughs. Obviously, it will contain spoilers, of course, so not for everyone, um, but I'm sure you'll like it. So yeah, so Skulls and the Stars is what I've earmarked as it's one of my it's my favourite story I think um, that I've read so far. Uh, so I'm really keen to to play through that. Okay, guys. Well, thanks for watching. Until next time, I'll see you then.